Right, hello, welcome back to another video. Uh, today we're going to be doing something ever so slightly differently. Um, I'm actually going to just do a presentation. This is something I prepared for my students at university. Uh, and we're going to be talking about PBR. Uh, specifically, the history, why, where, um, and most specifically, can we use grey in our metalness maps? So, let's get started. First of all, I want to start with a disclaimer. Um, I am not a render programmer or shader artist. Uh, I have done a decent amount of research. Search. I've read a lot about all these topics, um, and I'll post the references to those later, so you can sort of follow along and do your own research uh, if you're interested. Um, but I'm not going to assume that everything I've got 100% correct, um, as you'll see. Just to take everything with a pinch of salt. So um, hopefully it's all going to make sense. Hopefully it's all going to be clear-ish by the end of it. Um, but yeah, I just want to start with that disclaimer. Um, so. PBR, what is the R in PBR for? Where R is for rendering. Um, a renderer is a software, a hardware process that generates a visual image from a model. So if we just jump over here to Wikipedia, we have a list of 3D renderers. So some of these you may uh, have heard of. Arnold, that's the default one in Maya these days. Mental Ray was the old one. It's not around anymore. Um, Render Man, it's a very famous one. Uh, used a lot at Pixar. Um, you'll notice here, V-Ray, yeah, 3ds Max, I believe. Um, but you'll notice all of these are not game engines. So these are what I would call an offline renderer. Uh, they're not designed to run in real time. Um, and obviously a game engine is doing all that same rendering, um, but at real time. So um, here we are. Yes, real time versus offline. We also have this concept of biased versus unbiased. This is more for a offline renderer. Um, Basically, a biased renderer is making approximations. Uh, it's taking some shortcuts, effectively. Even with an offline renderer, you still need to worry about times and costs and memory management and all those things. So in some of the renderers, they use a few kind of shortcuts to make things cheaper, to make things quick and easy to work with. Um, and they are what you call biased renderers. Um, unbiased renderers, you get a better quality result, or you get a more accurate result, um, but it takes longer. Um, so. This is the idea of uh, taking shortcuts working um, to what you need. Quite often an unbiased renderer will take longer, but not actually look any better than a biased renderer because it's wasting those times. So obviously the approximations the biased one's trying to make for you um, should be ones that don't affect the visual quality. Um, Hopefully that makes sense. So how does the renderer know what to render to the screen? Well, that's what we have. Shaders, uh, mathematical models of how surfaces react to light. So we have here a few of the more common ones. Um, Blin, Fong, Cook Torrance, etc. Again, back over to Wikipedia. Um, some of these names hopefully you will recognize. Lambert, if you use Maya, you'll know what a Lambert material is. Um, same with Fong and Blin Fong. Um, they're just different ways people have made or people have developed to represent how light reflects off a surface. Um, that's it. They're all just mathematical models. Uh, and that's all PBR is as well. So, um, what does the PB stand for? So, well, PB is physically based. Um, there's a wonderful quote here from Joe Wilson, uh, goes by Earthquake Online uh, and used to work or does still work, I'm not quite sure, at Marmoset. But, um, PBR is more of a concept than a strict set of rules. So we're not dealing with something that's definite and super mathematical and, and accurate to 100% of the time. These are approximations, these are models um, that people have observed. So the idea with physically based rendering is they're using models where you've taken real observed data and then try to replicate that in the computer. A lot of the older shaders, a lot of these, they didn't have the power, didn't have the computing or the research, whatever it was, to get to that sort of same physical level of quality that we now can. And that's where PBR shaders have come from. So one advantage, obviously, is they look really photo real. Um, but they're using real-world measured values, so it's actually possible to go out with some equipment and measure how dark that black is, um, what's the base color, taking the specular component out and actually measuring that. Um, and also this idea of energy conservation, a lot of the old shaders, the amount of light hitting it isn't necessarily the same as the amount of light kind of being presented on it. Um, that's a key component of a PBR shader because it gives us a, again, real-world physical response and we're trying to replicate the real world quite often, not always, but quite often um, with our, with our CG. Um, 
big advantages to this. Firstly, consistency between artists. If you take an object that's been uh, set up using good PBR values, um, it's going to look like it would in the real world, and also um, in different lighting conditions. So if you're trying to light a scene and someone's made their concrete too dark, it's going to be very difficult. You might be able to adjust it with the light intensity in one scene, um, but obviously you want that consistency between your artists, between your lighting conditions, and that's where PBR kind of comes into this. So, um, oops, jump on. Uh, so how does this work in Unreal? That's my uh, area of expertise. Um, <coughs> so the opaque shader in Unreal actually has two different shading models. One for the metal and one for the non-metal. Um, and if we look down here, this is actually from Frostbite, but it uh, illustrates the um, the point quite well. I think um, this non-metal opaque shader on the left. Um, it's got a black input in the me metallic. Uh, it's got the base color, and that's giving us the overall color. And then there's a reflectance value, um, which is giving us sort of how shiny it is and where that is. Um, whoops. Um, so the metal shader, on the other hand. Um, so metals actually have a base color that's basically black or, or very near to black. Um, the light being, or the the color we're getting this is actually from the reflection. So it's taking that reflection, tinting it by this color, um, and so a hundred percent metallic surface. It doesn't need to use a base color input, but instead needs to use a RGB colored reflectance or colored reflecting values. Um, and so as an optimization in real time shading what we've done is we've taken the same RGB base color input and used it in different ways depending on whether we're dealing with a metal or a non-metal. So here we've got a non-metal, base color is base color and then the um, reflections are just kind of like not colors um, and just adding white reflections on. Here we've got an actual metal material, the base color has been automatically set to black, we've got no control over that and the RGB values we had put in as base color are now tinting the reflections to give us these colored reflections. Um, it's physically accurate, measured values, that's how it's done. Um, again, this is an optimization. Uh, you would probably have, or we'll get onto other ways you could do this uh, that won't be as, uh, as optimal, and non-game engine renderers might do this in a very different way. So we're very specifically talking about Unreal at this point. Um, <coughs> So where did this all come from? Well, you might have seen this uh, Substance Share download. It's a PBR validation tool. Um, so what this does is it takes the material that you're making in Substance and it just checks it. If we go back to this slide here, we've got some, some value ranges. So it says here, the non-metal range, anything darker than 10, anything blacker than black, than that, that, that there, uh, basically doesn't really exist based on real world observations. Coal is dark, it's not that dark, um, and the same with, with the white areas as well. So um, freshly driven snow, it's about the whitest thing we can find in nature, um, but it's not 255 pure white, and so there's a couple of areas where we shouldn't be using these base color values if we're using a non-metal material. Um, similarly with our metals, so these are the observed reflectance uh, metallic values um, for metals. So these are the colors that the reflections will be tinted by the, m the light bouncing off the material. Um, and they're all very bright. You don't actually get physical real metals with a brightness below 170. So that's what this PBI checking validation is doing. So it's just looking at your um, base color and then either if it's a non-metal checking for those uh, very lights and very darks and if it is a metal checking above that 170 or above, yes above that 170 value. Um, one of our students saw this and thought they could expand upon it and uh, so they've made a, a filter that automatically fixes those values if they are too dark or too light. Um, similarly if it is metal with a metal if it's too if it's too dark um, there's two ways you could fix that either you can make it less dark and brighten it up for your pure metal or you can actually make it less metal and that's what triggered off all of this discussion in the first place is can you make your metals less metal can you use a 0.5 or 0.8 metal value just to get it to fix this um, this, this validator and, and we'll get on to that in a second um, similarly I have made a post process material for um, the same logic as the PBO validator uh, available on my Gumroad if we jump over here to Unreal, um, this is the starter content scene. Um, and if I just add the post process material to the post process, simple as this, just add it as a layer, and we can see I've used slightly different colors. Um, so there's anything which is red is too dark, 
based on the PBR values. Um, so apparently this walnut material is too dark uh, based on the values that uh, have been observed in the real world. Similarly, um, anything which is too light it will be green. Nothing in here that is that's green, um, but you have to take my word for that one. And anything that's metallic but has too light of material or too dark a material, sorry, uh, will be blue. Um, so you'll notice here these metals in the base material. They're not to say that they're massively wrong, but just based on the validation checks from some of the documentation, uh, they're out of the PBR ranges that have been observed. Um, so that gold should be brighter, same with that copper. Um, so as I say, that is available on my Gumroad. Um, right, if we go here. So why is it all so confusing? Well, partly is the terminology. So metal, as in the physical material that things are made of, does not always equal metal, as in the the shading model, the metallic surface that we need. Um, and I think this really creates a lot of confusion. It would be nice if they'd used a different value or a different, uh, different word for the metal input in the shader, but there we are. Um, for the mathematical purists, if you have one shading model that's PBR correct for the opaque, and then another shading model that's PBR correct for, um, for non-metals and metals, um, if you blend them together, are you still in that PBR correctness? Don't know. Um, you will get a result. Obviously, you get a result if you use 0.5 grey, um, but is it actually correct in terms of the maths behind it, or is it just a fudge um, because of the way it is? Well, um, yeah, we don't know. So, there is also, oops, go back to here, um, areas for transitions. So, this is an area where we can definitely use grey um, if you have something that is metal on one side and then rusted and non-metal on the other side there's definitely going to be a transition between them um, and with video games and with CG you're obviously dealing at some point with the pixel level even with a 4k texture even with even an 8k texture at some point you get down to the per pixel level and that pixel inside it if it would have had some metals and some non-metals obviously the the resultant kind of metalness of that single pixel is going to be um, somewhere between 0 and 1 so we can definitely have greys in our transitions um, and then we have some more metals difficulties adding to the confusion if we go down here this is on polycount um, this post here by earthquake same guy as before Joe Wilson obviously knows what he's talking about um, these are all metals they're all real world physically observed metals um, but they maybe don't fit into that PBR observed metallic shader. So here we can see these sort of blued steels, very dark, um, dark values. It's the metal, but actually, is it being rendering as a metal in terms of the metallic workflow? Um, same down here. It advises us to use the uh, the base color as a dark blue, but that's going to fail the PBR validation check. So. Um, Difficult to know what the hard and fast rules are. So here again, anodization. These are definitely metal things, but they have uh, a very thin layer of non-metal on top of them, similar to paint. This is not going to be a metallic surface. Um, they're not rendering as metal. Um, so these dark things. So I think there's definitely a, a, a confusion there. But where you have these scratches, where you have the um, metal layer underneath being revealed, obviously this is now going to be using metallic. Similar powder coating a non-metal coating on a metal, physically metal, that's what it's made of, but not using metallic shading. And finally this one, um, there's some amount of metal in this metal coating. Um, so he advises us here a value of 0.85. That's not white black, it's not white, uh, it's not zero, it's not one, it's somewhere in the middle. Is that correct mathematically? Don't know. But again, this is just a long line of approximations. Um, that we've been doing with shaders since since day one. So, um, finally, yes. So also, then you have materials like this. This is a real photo. This is a surface called Vanta Black. It's a nano material. It's been sort of uh, engineered to uh, reflect as little light as possible, and it's like looking at a pure black surface. That's very obviously going to fail the PBR validation check. Um, but it's a real surface. It's a real thing. So the whole point of having rules and guidance lines is to know how they work and when you can break them. Um, and I found this uh, wonderful explanation from Action Dog. Um, the original zero and one rule, because this is the uh, the thing that gets bandied around a lot, well, Disney's workflow 
not in Unreal. Doesn't use their own uh, render pipeline, render man, or, or or whatever. Um, they have a layered shader, so they render the metallic surfaces first and then they render the non-metals and then they do some composition in the shader so they are using both metals and non-metals in the same thing but rather than doing it in just one value and getting greys they're using the, um, the the two layers on top of each other and adding onto the other and that's giving them this uh, correct result um, but they do have this sort of rule of thumb of 0 or 1 so this can be a little bit confusing, lots of information about it. Um, if you are interested in reading more about it, here are a number of links. Um, there's an awful lot of information. This is a topic that um, some really experienced artists are still discussing and still debating. Um, hopefully I've tried to break some of that information down uh, and come up with some um, explanations and some, some ideas behind why it's so complicated and, and, and what we can do. Um, but in conclusion, should we use grey? It depends. Sometimes it's going to be right, sometimes it's going to be not. But as long as you're thinking about what you're doing when you're doing it and aware that the metal surface is less important than whether it's a metallically shaded object, um, I think you'll be all right. So, um, as always, questions, comments, if you have any um, things you'd like answered about game art, um, let me know. Uh, like, subscribe, all of that stuff. And I have started a Patreon, so if you'd like to support what I'm doing here, um, that would be great. Uh, links below, and I will copy these links out for um, these as well. So if you want to do some more research into this yourself, then the links will be there as well. So uh, hopefully that's been helpful. Hopefully that may have explained some of at least why it's so confusing, if not actually made it any clearer about when to use metal or not. Um, but yeah. Hopefully it's helped, and I will see you all next time.